So uh, really, really uh, nice to hear you. Uh, you are in England, I suppose. I am in France. Uh, so welcome in France. Um, I, I see that uh, the last time you played in France is not very long ago. It's, uh, it was last year in uh, January. You played in the Cabaret Sauvage in Paris, of course. Uh, yeah. With every time I die in vain. Uh, yeah. Do you have a remembering of this show? Uh, how was it in Paris? Yeah. The show was incredible. If I'm, if I'm, if my memory is serving me correctly, it was, um, it was the first show of the tour. Um, uh, the venue was was really nice, and everyone was really cool, and the show was amazing. Yeah, so we had a great time. How was the tour? You tell me that uh, it was the beginning of the tour. You have the opportunity finally to play live uh, last year. There are not so many bands who play live, uh, <laughs> finally. Uh, how was the tour and do you have the opportunity to, to finish the tour? Yeah, yeah. The, the tour was incredible, really. Um, we had a great time, um, yeah, before, before sort of COVID shut down the world. So we were all uh, not aware of what was to come. So we were just in our stride, just sort of enjoying it. But um, yeah, the tour was amazing. It was really, really great to tour with uh, Every Time I Die, um, While She Sleeps, a long time fans of that band. Um, and also it was great to have Vane out as well. They're a really, uh, really great up and coming band from, from the States. So that was cool. The lineup was really good. And like I say, the show was, the show was incredible. Like um, loads of people crowd surfing and having fun and uh, having a drink. Um, we had a great time and, and yeah, the show was awesome. How was, uh, for all the people who didn't see uh, you on stage, uh, I hope we could see you uh, this year on stage, perhaps, uh, in, in France too. Uh, but uh, how could you describe uh, a show of the band? What, what do you want? Uh, to if any, for anyone that hasn't seen us play before, um, the way to describe our show, our show, I think, is um, energetic and passionate. Um, the, the feeling of unity that, that is apparent at a While She Sleeps show is, is always so amazing. Um, yeah, we, we, we have loads of people singing along, loads of people sort of letting go of negative energy and just being united with each other and, and, and enjoying themselves. If I, if I had to describe our show in two words, it would probably be energetic and passionate, yeah. It was, uh, do, do you uh, finally, uh, uh, as a singer, uh, do you appreciate uh, the life on the road uh, to, to, to play each, uh, each night or a uh, lot of gigs uh, in, a, in a week? Yeah, I mean, over the years, I've had uh, my fair share of problems with sort of looking after my voice. Um, obviously, as metal singers do, it's not something that like necessarily comes natural to be able to sort of shout and scream and, and use your voice to such a in, in such an extreme way every single night. And uh, I've definitely learned the hard way how to balance that and how to deal with um, with that whilst on the road. But in terms of sort of, you know, in terms of st taking a step back and appreciating what, what we we get to do as a group of friends and a band, and, and we don't take that for granted, you know, being able to sort of spend each evening with different people from different, uh, from all over the world and experience all these different places is unbelievable. And, um, and yeah, we're very lucky to be able to do that. And we're lucky that people care about our band enough to... Uh, to warrant us doing that so yeah we, we don't take that for granted and it's it's amazing being able to tour around the world and, and playing live music with your best friends for sure do you have a what what is for you uh i mean uh, do you have some show who are really exceptional uh, some shows uh, that you never forget because there's, there's something who happen in the show perhaps it could be a funny story or or anything i don't know but uh, something special happen on stage uh, I mean, you know, every single show is different. You know, every every night that we play a, a rock show is completely different from the next. And for that reason, that's sort of the main reason why I, I love being able to tour the world and play to different people. The reaction you get is is similar in all the different countries, but at the same time, you know, it it's you're getting the same out of it. You're getting to unite with people and having people sing your songs back to you is incredible. I think. One of the recent highlights for me was um, getting to play Brixton Academy in London, um, a sold out show. It's it's one of those career marks for us where it's always been in the back of our minds. Will we actually ever be a big enough band to be able to sell out that show? And 
and and that was such a huge celebration for us as well just before sort of covid hit so for many people that came to that show in the uk anyway that was uh that was a, a a big deal and and it was a very very special evening for the band and i and uh, we had a great time um if you can you remind me what what uh what big festivals you have in in uh, in france because i'm sh- sure we have uh, one uh, is very well known it, it, it's uh, the hellfest Yes, I was going to say Hellfest. We 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 played Hellfest before, and that was absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, just such a good atmosphere, such a good setting for a festival. So yeah, um, can't wait to be able to come back and uh, and play that festival again. Such a great time. Uh, so uh, you just uh, you just arrived with, uh, with a new album, uh, right. Sleep Society. Uh, yeah. How was uh, finally? How how do you work uh, on the writing uh, of this album? Uh, do you work the, 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 the like the same things? Do, did you do the same things that uh, the, the the album before, or do you work differently? How was it this time? Um, I think that over the years, sort of working together, writing, recording together, you sort of there's definitely things that you take from album to album that are very similar. With that being dynamic of what everyone brings to the table and what everyone brings to the band and recording. Um, this time was a lot different because we had to uh, work around COVID-19 and we couldn't necessarily all be in the studio at one time and we had to make sure we were sort of keeping our distance. I mean, we're very lucky in a sense that we have a warehouse sort of space in Sheffield in the UK that we can work out of. A lot of bands don't have the space that we have um, and it definitely made it very easy a lot more easy for us to be able to continue to work um, with having such a, a big space. It meant that we weren't on top of each other trying to sort of work around COVID. It meant that a couple of people could be in the studio while the rest of us were, weren't were in there and we could all be getting on with other things. So that was one thing that was really different this time. Um, I think while she sleeps as a whole, we, we always want to try and Keep our fan base on its toes and we never want to try and recreate the same album twice i think it's very important for us to to always be pushing ourselves and um trying new things and we have a bit of a a bit of a thing in the studio where like if it kind of scares us a little bit or it feels a little bit different for for us then we kind of want to experiment with that and i think that's why sort of the last couple of records there's been uh, some different sort of to the, into the songs and I think it's just because we want to remain interesting for our fan base and, and keep our fan base on its toes as to what to expect from, from us um, and, and this also means that we get to um, we get to have a bit more fun in the studio not trying to recreate the same sounds twice and, and really sort of step outside the box in a way um, so yeah there were lots of different things that went into recording Sleep Society we're, we're, we're like extremely proud of the record and uh, you know, I, I definitely feel very, uh, very bad for for any bands that sort of released an album before this and haven't been able to tour it. Um, we're very lucky at the moment because um, we did a lot of our touring just before COVID hit, so mm-hmm. it, that enabled us to sort of take a bit of time off while this has all been trying to sort itself out. And we, we were scheduled in the studio anyway, so we're very lucky in that sense. But, um, but yeah, I think. Just in terms of sort of writing and recording together, I mean, we we work in a lot of different ways, and and it's kind of we just come together to get the job done. Really, um, we we don't try and uh, think too much about past records, and um, we just hope that we write things that people are excited by, that that remain current, and um, and that, that, are, that are exciting for our for our fan base to to not know what to expect from a new sleeps record so they're, they're the main things we try in house and all coming together you know we all bring something very different to the table in while she sleeps and we're we, we, we work very five dimensionally like there's not just one person writing everyone brings a little something to the table so it's, it's always interesting to see what develops out of a new sleeps record so yeah we definitely had fun yeah, you you uh, so you choose to to recording with a, a long uh, friend of you, Carl Bourne, who, yeah. who do the production uh, and engineering, mastering. Uh, yeah. That you uh, finally who produce uh, the album. Uh, yeah. well, for, for, for for this album, do you have a, a special idea of the sound? Uh, what you want? 
uh, for this album, or uh, or is it? Uh, how do you work with Carl? Uh, does it bring many things to the band? Uh, how is the, the chemistry be, be with with him? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, Carl has really been the only producer that we've ever worked with, and I think we kind of stand by the philosophy of if it's if it's not broken, then it doesn't need fixing. Um, it's it can be very difficult to find a producer that that can sort of really connect with with who you are as people and um, you know if you if if any artist finds a producer that can kind of come in and and it, and and work with you on on such a good level then you know it, that's a really special thing and and for us Carl Bown he's worked on every record we've done apart from our first long EP. Mm. Um, so from this is the six right through to the, to our current record sleep society like he's worked on everything and he really is a very important part of the team like he makes us feel comfortable he understands from working with us sort of where we're coming from and what we want to do with sections we have a lot of references that that sort of um that, that we all know now and we all know you know we all come together and we kind of know the vibe and what we're trying to create so it's really special to have Carl um and we yeah we we definitely appreciate his input he, he he comes up with some great ideas just as much as we do and um we really work together on the overall sound and production um so yeah Carl, carl's great and, and we love him to bits and it's it, like i say it's amazing to have somebody that we can rely on um that we always work on our records with he's definitely like a sixth member of the band if you like um especially in the studio and um yeah he, he plays a very important part in the, the production of uh the washi sleeps records it was uh so there are uh, 11 11 tracks on, on this album uh, you are the singer so you you, you change uh, uh when when i listen to first uh, the first songs and the, the second one your single you are all you need is very different from an uh, atmosphere, uh, is there um, is there a, a challenge for you as a singer? Some songs who have been a really a, a great challenge to sing uh, in studio. Yeah, I mean, like it's very difficult, I think, to to just sing well in general. Um, I've <laughs> I've struggled over the years with um, with uh, throat surgeries, and um, I struggle from sort of acid reflux as well, which is very very bad for singers. Um, so I have all this going on aside from just having to shout every night on stage, you know, so it's quite it's it can often be quite a battle for me to stay on top and and be at good form. I think um, like when you are a, sort of a screamy heavy vocalist, there's a lot of things that are in motion then to try and get a good sound. Um, and it takes a while to develop a technique that's sustainable on the road um, and also works really well in the studio. Um, and that's what I've spent, you know. 10 years like trying to um trying to perfect and i still think i've got a long way to go <laughs> luckily our fans don't necessarily think that but um it's it's an ongoing process for me and um you know i think being able to try and sing cleanly is something that's very personal um and it can be very hard you know like when you can when you scream um you can almost put on a slight front you know you can kind of hide behind a heavy voice um, quite well but when you're when you sing cleanly you're very vulnerable if you like you're very out there it's 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 your clean voice it's very personal to you so it can be quite difficult to really let go of of that and, and sort of feel confident at singing so for me there was quite a challenge on this record with sort of working on my clean voice and trying to to, to use that a bit more and, and gain confidence in that um as well as me like uh, Sean and Matt uh over the last few years and the last few records have really started getting involved and um, singing more than they have done on previous records. So that's nice as well. It's been able to bounce off each other and uh, work on different things. You know, I think for, for While She Sleeps, it's important to have that dynamic. I feel like it's quite easy if the band has sort of one singer or, or maybe even one style of voice and one singer. It can get sort of very one dimensional. And for us, it's very important to have different levels um, that can come in and, and sort of pop at different times to really accentuate the message and accentuate what it'll be like live. Um, and it gives us room to sort of make error then, you know, we can back each other up live if it's difficult for another person or, you know, it's, it's fun in a way just to bounce the vocals around. And it, it means that we get a breather 
in a live sense and we get to sort of enjoy it for, for a second without trying to absolutely nail the vocal. So, um, so yeah, it's, it, it's fun and um, we always have a good time. But yeah, for me, this record especially was, uh, was all about working on my clean voice and, and um, whilst trying to balance that with, uh, with maintaining a good, uh, a good scream and a good sort of shouting voice. So yeah, it was, it was quite tough, but um, I think, Album to album and uh, year to year, I'm sort of grasping that more and more. Um, and it's taken me a while. I um, I tend to stick to my bad habits like drinking and smoking far too much. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's been a big learning curve for me to try and ditch those things and uh, look after my voice properly. But um, I think I'm getting there. So we'll see. <laughs> do, you have a, uh, do you have some, uh, finally, uh, some model, uh, some singer for you? Who are uh, an influence? Uh, who are uh, uh, you appreciate some singer and you you say, well, I would like to do like the, like him or, or like her. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I I you know I constantly uh, come across bands and singers that are making my life even harder <laughs> um, all the time. Um, there's so many out there, you know. In, in our world, I think that Sam from Architects' voice is is unbelievable i think that he sounds amazing live both his clean voice and his sort of screaming screaming voice as well um i've seen him live so many times we've been on tour with those guys and he's he's always so on point um it's unbelievable i really like the woman's voice from a band called london grammar they're like a uk um sort of like a bit of a gospel pop vibe i guess i don't really know what they call themselves but her voice is absolutely beautiful um Yeah, and uh, one of my favorite singers ever he plays in a band called Norma Jean. Um, they yeah. have actually this record here. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know Norma Jean, this record is called Wrongdoers. Um, and the vocal um, display on that is unbelievable. Um, that's one of my favorite records ever, and his, his voice is um, really, really good. Both both singing and screaming is, is unbelievable. So, yeah, check them out if you haven't seen them. But... I'm constantly meeting people on the road that, that you know, their voices are outstanding and I'm always <laughs> I'm always trying to pick their brains and figure out what they're doing te technique wise or, you know, diet wise to see uh, to see how I can improve. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm, uh, I'm constantly learning. I see a, a big box of uh, Black Sabbath Paranoia just be behind. Is it a band that you are... Uh... Uh, what influenced you, or, or you are uh, you like it? You are a fan of uh, uh, Black Sabbath? Yeah, I mean, like I didn't really get into it till I was a bit older, really. Um, I think when, when I was really young, I, I got into sort of a lot of emo music first. Uh, before that, it was sort of Marilyn Manson, Slipknot, uh, Linkin Park, those kind of bands, and then. Shortly after that, I got into a lot of emo music that was sort of scream, screaming and, and clean singing. And then later on through sort of, you know, skateboarding and hanging out with friends and stuff, um, kind of got into Sabbath and Motorhead and a lot of more stoner rock bands. Um, really, I'm really into a band called Sweat Lodge as well. They're like a US uh, stoner rock band. Um, and they're a bit psychedelic as well. But they're amazing. Like... I, I don't really have a specific genre that I just listen to all the time. I listen to a lot of different stuff and so ev everyone in the band does as well. Like um, we all listen to so many different genres and we're not always listening to the same thing at the same time either. So that's one thing that's interesting about um, the new record Sleep Society is what, what we all brought to the table. And I think that's how we get our sound in a way because we don't necessarily all like exactly the same thing. We all bring something so it always makes for an interesting recording process. You, uh, so uh, Sleep Society is the name of the album, it's also uh, the name of the first single. Uh, yeah. uh, what, what, what is the story uh, of, uh, of this song, Sleep Society, who gave the, the name of the album, so I suppose it's very important. Yeah, definitely. Basically, the, basically we recorded an album called You Are We, and we released that through a pledge campaign it was our first ever sort of independent record 
we stepped away from um, a label and we wanted to release it by ourselves. And it, you know, it was very, uh, it was a very scary time because we didn't know how our fan base would react or, you know, if if the sort of if that way of releasing music was was definitely going to work. So, you know, we released it through that way. And what we learned from that record, it was one of our most successful records, and and it was. For us, it was the best way to work. It was directly from us to our fan base. And the way that our fan base supported that record was directly back to us. So we were in charge of everything. We fulfilled all the orders, um, made sure everything was sent out. Um, and I think that's basically what kind of triggered releasing the Sleep Society. Because, because that was successful and our fans responded to it in such a positive way, um, I think that's what made us realise that the Sleep Society and having a subscription-based um, platform for people to get involved with um, was basically gonna gonna sustain the band for us. And um, and I think you know the way that streaming is going and the way that music is is sort of received these days, it's it can be very difficult for for bands to to make their careers sustainable. Um, at the same time as there being demand for these bands, it can be really hard to to sort of balance that and make sure that they can spend enough time doing it and also make a living from it if the demand is there. And um, that's basically what we tried to do with Sleep Society is the, the the initial release of the first single and letting everyone know what we were trying to do. And, and luckily our fan base is, is always really supportive and the message that we deliver to them, they always sort of spend a bit of time digesting and they seem to respond in such a positive way. And that's what we've seen with with the release of this record and, and the Sleep Society and, and people getting involved with that. It's it's been amazing. And hopefully it just opens a few people's eyes to the fact that I think that the way that streaming platforms pay money out to artists is is uh it's it's not really fair. You know, your Ed Sheerans, your Justin Bieber's, they kind of scoop all the cash and then sort of your more underground punk rock bands if you like kind of suffer on the algorithms so we'll see what happens i think a lot of, a lot more politicians and people in in the industry are turning their heads towards the fact that this kind of needs addressing and we need to find a more fair way of bands popular bands to to be able to sustain um a career out of making music when the demand is there so so that was kind of how we came to the idea and the message, the initial message that we wanted to deliver with the Sleep Society, um, and it made sense for us to uh, it made sense for us to release the title track to, with that message um, on the forefront of it um, first off, and and like I say, our fan base sort of seemed to swallow it, and um, they they accepted it really well, and they understood exactly what we were saying. So we're very lucky to have such a such a crazy fan base to always stick by us and uh, and understand what we're trying to do. So finally, you create your your own crowdfunding. Is it sort yeah, of crowdfunding the direct you? Yeah, basically, it's a it's a subscription based based platform um, that you can subscribe to, and and anyone that's in there, they get sort of extra benefits. So it just allows it allows us as the band that for anyone that's supporting us directly in that way, it just means that we can give them a bit more attention and give them some more some more benefits and, and perks, if you like, for being so supportive. And it allows us to, you know, one, concentrate on being a band as opposed to trying to be a clothing line. But it also, you know, it gives the, the supporters, the, the, the initial supporters, a bit more face time and, and a bit more of something else to look forward to in terms of how they're supporting us. So, we, yeah, you know, we try and we try and give them as many benefits as, as possible for uh, for signing up and supporting our careers, basically. Um, and like I say, the response has been awesome. We're very lucky to have such a cool fan base. And um Yeah, so it's uh, it's going well so far. So hopefully that keeps going. It was uh, the, the new single is called uh, "You Are All You Need." Uh, it's like a it's a sort of a song. It's not not musical, but uh, when uh, when I read the, the the title of the tracks, I, I feel uh, "You Are All uh, You Need." You know, I feel uh, the uh, the Beatles and something like that because there are so many uh, titles like, like that. What is the story of uh, of uh, of this song? Basically, it's about sort of try like it's so easy to live a life based on other people's lives, if you like. Um, it's about sort of accepting who you are, what you are, uh, where you come from, and sort of 
being comfortable with that really um i think a lot of people during covid have been like heavily isolated and you know it's quite easy to feel like you're kind of on your own in a certain feeling or a certain emotion and for us this song just highlights how you know stop living your life necessarily through instagram or measuring your what you have or your life on other people's expectations um and kind of just be comfortable with being you and, and being who you are. That, I guess that's the initial message that we're trying to deliver. Um, yeah, and hopefully people find that message. I think the important thing to note with While She Sleeps is that we always try and keep our uh, lyrics open to a bit of uh, uh, personal interpretation. We want people to to grab hold of the lyrics and, and sort of figure out what it means for them you know like uh, we try and leave it open in that sense so um yeah you are all you need is for me it's such a great song from this record and the message is strong and i hope people take um take some positivity for what we're trying to say there are you uh, finally inspired by the, what happened to the humanity since uh, one year now uh since march uh, of uh, last year uh, yeah are you inspired by that to, to write some uh, lyrics about that uh, personally, you know, I, I kind of s tried to steer away from it a little bit. I felt like it'd be very easy for us to write a record based around sort of the feeling of COVID-19. But I think what is quite um, interesting is that when when you write in lyrics in a poetic way, how th they c the relationship between what you're trying to say in one sense can sometimes mean something to another to another thing if you like it, it can double up and mean two things and you could be speaking about a relationship um with a loved one in one sense but it's quite weird to see how that can make sense in a political way as well you know and and that's always interesting for us like i say to to keep that open um you know covid's been tough on everyone it's been tough on definitely this, this industry um and you know i kind of try and steer away from talking about it because you know everyone's kind of sick of hearing about it but um yeah it, it's been a crazy one for sure and it's been a roller coaster for everybody um yeah i i personally tried to steer away from uh, from talking about it too heavily in in our new record um but there's definitely some some poetic lyrics there that, that do cross over and will make sense to, uh, to the situation i i i i see that uh on each album, for, uh, you have always uh, some special guests. I see that, and uh, you have uh, many special guests on this one. Uh, yeah. uh, what, what do you appreciate this one? You have uh, Simon Ney from from Byfield Claro. You have uh, yeah. uh, Derek Whitley, uh, Sun Forty One. Uh, yeah. So uh, on defeat for the brave. Uh, uh, what do you appreciate? in that kind of a uh, special guest when, when you get uh, some special needs how do you do you choose them was it easy to get them <laughs> <laughs> um basically you know again we we just try we want to maintain being a, a current and interesting band and and both the guests on this new record are, are amazing for us we, we've been huge some 41 fans from being younger that was like our punk rock years growing up so to work with Derek on on the perfect escape was was amazing um we just heard through um other people in the industry that he'd heard about our band and he kind of liked some songs so we just kind of reached out to him and I think we always just want from a guest spot is just someone who can come on and you know put a bit of themselves into our songs and, and make them a bit bit interesting make them make them their own a little bit and and bring something new to the table um and i think both guests did that um in a similar way simon neil um we actually went on tour with um bullet for my valentine and um their lighting guy sort of we got to know him after a few a few weeks on the tour and he kind of said oh you know i work for biffy claro um well they're really big fans of your band. They've been listening to your stuff for for a while, and we were, you know, I used to listen to Biffy Clyro when I, you know, when that, when I was younger, and um, yeah, it was amazing to hear that, that these people that sort of we'd looked up to at some stage of our lives were 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 tuning in and listening to While She Sleeps. So that's how that came about, and then we just reached out to him and sent him a message saying, "Would you be interested in 
a collaboration on, on a sleep shot song. And he was like, yeah, I've been a fan of you guys for a while. So, um, so yeah, I can't wait for people to hear nervous. It's, uh, it's such a good track with Simon Neil on. And I think the world's ready for, uh, for that song. I think it's going to, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see how people receive that song. Just the last question. Uh, uh, the band began finally uh, in 2006, so uh, it's a long time ago. Uh, yeah. But you are very young. Uh, uh, the first album came uh, in two, uh, 2012. Uh, this is the sixth. Uh, yeah. how do, uh, could you describe the, uh, uh, the musical evolution of the band? since the beginning to now? Um, like I said before, I think we always try and do things outside of our comfort zone. I feel like a lot of the evolution that we've made um, has felt really quite natural. Um, you know, I think we're, we're lucky in a sense of like, I don't really feel like anyone else sounds like while she sleeps. I don't think people manage to sing and sound like us. And I don't think anyone else really plays are like Sean Long either so I feel like we're very lucky in that way that we can sort of move around different genres a little bit and and still sound like while she sleeps it's a very it's a very amazing thing for us to be able to say that we have um I think that there's definitely some surprises in there um along the way um it, it can be quite tough to summarize that evolution you know but um yeah, I think it's an interesting journey, and I think that every album we're growing as individuals and 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 growing in the way that we work together and, and put out new music. Um, and I think it'll be interesting to see where that goes to in the future once this album's out there and people have heard it. But I think that on the whole, I feel like the progression that we're making as a band feels like a natural one. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really happy with how things are going, and uh, I'm excited for the future of While She Sleeps. If you just, uh, the last question, if you uh, just uh, uh, present this new album to somebody who don't know the band, uh, yeah. what would you say? What would uh, you say? I would say that if, you, if you're open-minded and you're into sort of rock, metal, punk rock, pop, um, I feel like there's something in there for everybody. Um, and if I was going to say check it out, I'd probably tell you to listen to Nervous, systematic and you are all you need um just because i think they're a great example of what this album can bring um but yeah i'd say come and check us out live <laughs> and, you'll, <laughs> and you'll fully understand <laughs> well thank you very much for the interview really it was yeah. nice thank you thank you so much for your time i appreciate that uh, bye bye thank you bye now thank you bye, bye.